of impelling vibhava is the love that manifests when we see something or someone that reminds us of Krishna. And that basic ecstatic love, basic vibhava, is that love that manifests when we see Krishna himself. So then, this next section is describing all of the causes or vibhavas of basic ecstatic love. See, that might not be a little, that might not be perfectly clear from the text itself. We have to do a little analysis to come to that conclusion. But that's what we're doing here. We're, do, we're reading between the lines of the scripture and we're trying to understand why is this particular topic given in this particular order? Uh, because uh, Srila Rupa Goswami is describing basic vibhava, basic ecstatic love, which is a response, the response of the jiva upon perceiving the wonderful transcendental qualities of the Lord. So that's why he goes into the, the whole description. There are 64 qualities, and then... Um, 50 of them are shared with the living entities, and these other 14 are specific to the Lord, and uh, 10 of them are found in other expansions of the Lord, but four of them are only found in Krishna, and that's why Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead, and not just the, the personality of Godhead. You see? That's the difference. The jivas, including the demigods, can have up to the first 50 qualities. Then the next ten are only found in the personalities of Godhead, like Narayan, Vishnu, and so on. But the final four qualities are only found in Krishna. And those four qualities are... Oops. Next. He is the performer of wonderful varieties of pastimes, especially his childhood pastimes. He is surrounded by devotees endowed with wonderful love of Godhead. This means Mahabhava. He can attract all living entities all over the universes by playing on his flute. Krishna's flute playing is just amazing. He has a wonderful excellence of beauty which cannot be rivaled anywhere in the creation. We were just talking about that. That the, with the great kings that came to the Rajasuya sacrifice, when they saw, even the demigods, when they saw Krishna, they said, oh, this is it. It's impossible to have a more beautiful form than this. We've never seen such a form. So beautiful. Uh, this Krishna, is he's... He's so exquisite that your words fail. Uh, just to see him one time, and you know it, that, then the mind is is gone. The mind is completely absorbed in thinking of his form. We don't want to think about anything else. So, what time is it? It's eight fifteen. Okay. So, uh, do we have any questions on these? Topics so far. Any questions? Uh, I was. Um, I have a question about the jivas who have relationship in, in servitorship, for example, that don't relate directly with Krishna, but with Vishnu or another dark. Uh, I don't know. Where's, where's Vishnu? <laughs> Where is Vishnu? In yeah. the Vaikuntha. Vaikuntha, yes, yeah. the Vaikuntha. That they don't have any relationship or any, I don't think if they have any experience of these four qualities of Krishna, the flute playing and like that. No, we don't. So, is, at the same time, that doesn't make that love or that uh, relationship incomplete, does it? No. It seems like it's lacking. Or well, from our perspective, it may be lacking because we're devoted to Krishna. Uh -huh. But from their perspective, it's complete because the, the flavor or the particular uh, mood of love that those jivas 
are attracted to is in, is found in its completion okay. in the Vaikuntas. Okay? So in other words, for them, this formal rules-based devotional service in an attitude of awe and reverence is completely satisfying. See? They're made for that. Yes, they're made for it. Exactly. And so for us to go to them and say, well, actually, you know, you should worship Krishna because of conjugal love and friendship and all that. They can't understand any of it. They say, no, Krishna is, in a, Krishna is an incarnation of Vishnu. See, when you hear somebody say that, you know what it means is that they're going to Vaikuntha. They can't go to Goloka because they cannot understand that Krishna has these four transcendental qualities not found even in Vishnu, not found even in Narayan, see, not even found in Rama. Uh, in fact, those, those four qualities are not even found in Dwarka. They're only found in Goloka Vrindavan. Yes. Okay. In the, in the case of uh, Lord Balaram, that he has his own pastimes and like that, still that would be without those four. Well, no, actually Lord Balaram also uh, has those, most of those qualities, but not Except in such... Flute. Well, he can also play the flute. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> um, but uh, usually he doesn't. He only, he'll only do that when, when he's not in Krishna's presence. Yes. See? Balaram has his his own like it's it's, it's Universe, funny yeah. yeah it's like a funny uh, space you know but Balaram has his own devotees his own cowherd boyfriends his own gopis everything so it's like you know there's there's Krishna gopis and there's Balaram gopis and you know it's it's technical it's technical it's, <laughs> it's far out yeah it's esoteric you know what can I say but anyway. Those devotees are uh, specifically attracted to Balaram's qualities, which are very similar to Krishna's. So, uh, I mean, after all, he's Krishna's elder brother. Uh, so then, Krishna, you know, he, he has this wonderful, this wonderful quality of attracting everyone's love. You know, with, uh, the paintings that you see of Krishna don't really do him justice. You know, Krishna. His, he's, he's got this attitude, I mean, it's, it's hard to, it's, he's so cute, you know, he's always like flirting and, you know, you see Krishna like standing there with the flute, like he's all, like he's all bored and stiff or something. <laughs> That's just because the painter is, is completely, uh, bored. You know, yeah, <laughs> maybe the painter's like that. But, <laughs> but Krishna, Krishna is, first of all, he's always moving, he's always dancing. He's always in motion, and he's he, he's always got an attitude. He's like you know, hey. You know. He's doing many things at the same time. Constantly, yeah. He's he's engaged in all these activities simultaneously, and and relating with all these different devotees simultaneously. And each one of those devotees thinks that I have a special relationship with Krishna, and Krishna makes him think like that, that only I understand Krishna really. <laughs> Rasa no, Raj. they all yeah Rasa Raj. He's he's the king of Rasa. He can somehow he he can relate to all these different devotees at the same time, and they all think I have the most special relationship with Krishna. Yeah, it's just amazing. It's just <laughs> That's, huh? also each pose uh, what he presents is also this uh, a different mood, right? That's right. Yeah. Well, see, now we're going to get into this when we go to India. We're going to get, we're going to get uh, uh, lessons in the, uh, the uh, classical dance, right? We'll have to find somebody who's a little open-minded, you know, so we can kind of jazz it up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I am incapable of learning anything without jazzing it up. <laughs> So uh, we'll find somebody who can teach us the, the language of movement.
I've only seen oh, that. Oh, it's thing. huge. Let me tell you. Oh, no, it's, yeah. You, you go, when you go to India, one of the things that you'll find is that there is a very elaborate body language, which I have never seen in any other culture. Uh, you can almost do anything without even speaking, just by body language. It's been too long. I haven't been in India, and I forget a lot of it's not it. Not like signs, or like, huh? it's like sign. No, it's not sign language. Huh? It's oh, how can I explain? <laughs> yeah, it's just a way. It's just like a way of moving. It's it's hard to explain, but it's like. Well, we have a little of those things. After after being in India, yeah, we already have. Yeah, you know, I always talk with my hands. Have you noticed? When you open the door, <laughs> when you open the door to someone and you say, 